Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, When They Want Distance. When They Want Distance. Sometimes we come across individuals who they start off and they are very much in our lives. And then over time, they want distance. Okay. Now, some people who are not used to that sort of thing, people slowly but surely distancing themselves, especially their favorites, they are going to resist the change. But the spirit of the Lord told me that when they want distance, give it to them. Don't fight it. Don't manipulate. Don't make excuses. Just give them the distance. Now, the distance that they are requiring doesn't have to be because you offended them in some way. The distance that they need doesn't have to be about you. But some individuals will make distance about themselves. We talked about various personality disorders. Some of them are clingy, needy, controlling, manipulative. You know the rest. And so when you are that one distancing yourself away from some people, they're going to resist the change if they're used to getting something from you, whether that's a listening ear, money, opportunities, what have you. They're going to fight against that. Well, if you are that one who has been using someone for time, if you are that one who has been going around the family or that one who is used to receiving phone calls and you notice that things are beginning to change and you start telling people, don't forget to call me. Okay. Don't let it be too long before I hear from you. And the person continues to distance his or herself. Don't be the foe to that individual. Don't be that one that's trying to keep them close to you. But you get some parents and grandparents and you get some managers and you get some supervisors and you come across some friends and some people who I need you. I want you stay close to me. Don't leave me. Don't forget to call me. My birthday's coming up. The holidays are showing up. Don't keep my grandkids, my great grandkids away from me. What's wrong with you? And there's nothing wrong. A lot of times there's nothing wrong. You got to understand that children of light are very much different than children of darkness. Children of light, God is in control because children of light have said, Lord, I want you to come into my life. So you never know what's going to happen. And if you know that you got believers in your family and they have said things over the years, like God told me, God showed me I'm doing this for God. You got to know the difference between the wheat from the tares. And one thing about it, when distance takes place, it's not always an ugly thing, but you can make it ugly. If you're the demanding one, you can make it an issue. If you're the one that's holding people around their ankles, grabbing them, right? Telling them don't go. I had an individual years ago who was abusive, who did that to me. And I'm telling you, I had a sick feeling in my stomach at that time. Get up. What are you grabbing on my ankles for? I thought you were stronger than that. And then, of course, ended up hurting me because I had those kind of words to say because I thought it was weak. I thought it was just downright stupid to be doing that. Some people would say, well, you know, I wish somebody would grab my ankles. <laughs> but no, when it happens, it's not a good feeling unless, of course, you're the prideful one, unless you're that type that likes that sort of thing. But for me, it was just terrible. Have some respect for yourself, you see. But you have some people who they're not doing that. They're not doing that to such an extreme, but they're doing it in some very clever, subtle ways. And then eventually they show their true colors if you have a falling out with them. The reason why I don't like you, the reason why I distance myself from you, the reason why. And then they try to take some kind of power, 
some type of control over it. Meanwhile, they weren't the ones that were gradually distancing themselves. They were the ones, if anything, that was encouraging everybody to call and come around and all of that. But when pride gets in the way, things get all muddled up. Things get twisted up. Yeah, well, when I started distancing myself away from you, no, no, that's not how it went down. I knew that there were some things that God wanted me to do, says the child of light. And so I knew that I couldn't get certain things done if my mind was on A, B, and C, whatever that is for some people, okay? Then you have some individuals who they see a storm coming with some people, and so that's why they start to distance themselves because they don't want to be mixed up in the drama. There's drama ahead. There's a storm ahead. Nope, I'm not riding with her on this one. Nope, I'm not going down that path with him on this one because I know what that's going to be about and I don't have the mental capacity to deal with it. She got issues, some say. He got a lot of problems and I don't want to hear it. And so where they were once available to take your phone calls, not anymore. Where they were once available to listen to what you had to say, not anymore. Every time I talk to her, I get a headache. Every time I come around him, ooh, my stomach starts to hurt. Lord, can you just take this from me? And the Lord says, well, stop calling and stop coming around him. But I mean, they're going to start to suspect something. Well, isn't that the whole plan? Well, I don't want them to think I'm this way and that way. See, that's the problem, the Lord says. You're too concerned about what people think. If I tell you to distance yourself away from folks, you're not concerned about what I think when you decide that you want to rebel or you want to reject what I have to say, the Lord says. So because you're this way, here's what I'm going to do. And then here comes the consequences. Here comes the spiritual trials because somebody just didn't want to listen and obey. But the child of light, when he or she knows that God is saying it's time, it's time, it's time. Distance yourself. He or she's going to do it because they're not about to lose their anointing, their blessings or nothing else messing around with some folks. And some of you all need to catch hold of it. You got believers in your family that's doing some, dare we say it, bizarre things, a little bit odd, a little bit strange, going on these mission trips, fellowshipping with all these different people. They're not around the family as much. Some of the selfish ones got a lot of conversation about what this one and that one's doing while they think that God's not paying attention, while they think that God is not listening to all of their negative conversation. God says, I got my daughter. I got my son. Don't be concerned just because he or she is not going to be available to you around the holidays doesn't mean that he or she doesn't love you doesn't mean that he or she got issue with you doesn't mean that he or she is not called and chosen to do some things. Don't always think that the enemy is at work, says the Lord. Somebody needed to hear that. Somebody needed to hear that. Sometimes people are called to war. Did you know that some of you mothers and fathers? Sometimes God allows that sort of thing to take place. We see soldiers all through the Old Testament. People who God put on assignment to do things like take land, <laughs> right? We see it. Some people like to skip over the Old Testament. Some of you all, you better go back because in the Old Testament, that's where some of the freedom is meant uh, emotionally for you concerning your children who are at war. God hasn't changed. There are still battles. There are still things that he has his people doing. Some of them wear armor. Some of them don't. And people are holding other people back from God's mission because they are so self-centered and think that the world is supposed to revolve around them. The matriarch says, not my son. And God says, but your son. The patriarch says, not my daughter. And the Lord says, but your daughter. You see, a long time ago, back when I was thinking about going to the army or the Marines. I felt this feeling like it was the right thing to do. By the time I had talked to a couple of recruiters and so forth, I was pretty much sold out on the idea until I talked to my dad about it. And he looked me up and down and said, you won't even last. 
But the thing is, is that sometimes people will say things and it's in your best interest and praise God. But other times you have people who will say some things that are not in your best interest. So no, it wasn't for me to go to the Marines or the Army at that time. But what God had called me to later on in life was a different sort of battle. So where the father was right concerning the battlefield and me being ill-equipped to be able to handle that sort of battlefield, he was not in the know in terms of the spiritual battlefield that God was calling me to. Because you see, when a man's mind is not thinking of the things of God, when a man's mind is not drawn near to the Lord, a man will come up with his own assumptions and he will look a bit foolish because you don't know my father in heaven. I know that's a cutting word. I know for some of you all, you would look at that and say, hmm, that's just a bit too much. And isn't that borderline disrespectful? Oh, once again, self-centeredness. God is no respecter of titles. The one who wants someone to be close just because of a title is the one that's deceiving his or herself when it comes to the things of God. God creates the vision between mothers and daughters. God creates the vision between fathers and sons. Oh, oh, somebody needed to hear that again. I say God creates the vision between children and parents. And everybody wants to blame the devil for all sorts of stuff. But sometimes God creates this sort of thing because he knows the heart of that parent. He knows the heart of that child. And he also knows how men and women have a way of manipulating situations to keep from people growing in Christ. Because they're not growing. Therefore, uh, you, you're not growing either. So distance is a good thing. I know for some of you all, once again, I've got to remind you that it isn't all bad. For some of you all, it's bad because your negative view of distance is what's making you feel that way. And in your mind, you've got to come up with all sorts of reasons as to why distance is there. And the Lord says, rather than focus on why distance is there, you need to be reading my word, trusting in me, being around the like minded, allowing me to use you to help others instead of worrying about why and who and what and being critical. And as I've said in other audio, some folks don't have much longer. They really don't. The casket is being prepared. The death angel is standing in the wing. Some folks then already had dreams about their death. And they still, they still haven't gotten matters straight. They still haven't went and apologized to folks. They still haven't done what God has called them to do, which is to bless others. They're still holding on. Holding on to things that are going to rot Things that are going to be stolen, things that are going to break, things that are going to cause nothing more than war between some folks after the deceased leaves. And that person may be up there with God or may be down low in hell. Because see, that's the problem nowadays. There's not enough people talking about hell. And some folks are distancing themselves away from walking corpse, right? They're, they're distancing themselves away from the walking dead because they don't want to be caught up in nothing that the walking dead is tied to. Some folks can feel in their spirit. That one right there, I don't care what the minister says at the funeral. That one going straight to hell. I ain't trying to be mixed up with that one. I ain't trying to be mixed up with that family either. Because that family, they, they, ooh, they got a lot of stuff going on with them. Generation after generation, it's a, that family's cursed. You see, some people, that's a bit in tune to some spiritual things. They may not be all that close to God, but they are in tune to some spiritual things. They start to distance themselves because they can smell death. 
See, some of you all, you're not in the know on these sorts of things because you distanced yourself away from the wrong folk while you drew near to the devil's minions. So when death show up, it's going to hit you in your chest. And some of you all, you better hope and pray that you don't have a heart attack when it comes. I can't believe so-and-so done passed away. Oh, that was my favorite. And the Lord says, your favorite? Oh, I thought, I thought that, uh, you were trusting in me, you double-minded. See, some people distance themselves away from all of the foolishness, the gossips, the liars, the double-minded, the people that are sexually immoral. They distance themselves away from people who cause a lot of abusive situations for others, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. They don't want to be mixed up in that kind of drama. And do you blame them? And you may be one of them. Right? I don't want to be mixed up with those folks. And God, he sees. And that's why some of you all get blessed and bless some more. And when trouble comes, you end up escaping trouble. And you, for some of you all, have been like a cat with nine lives. Because you know how to draw near to the Lord. Rather than draw near to men and women. So distance, once again, is not a bad thing. Well, I thank you so much as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Be encouraged. Subscribe today. Also, if you haven't given, we do welcome donations. Blessings to you.